ladies and gentlemen, all passengers, all rise for a story dive episode. I'm rising. I'm rising. Order in the train. I I, I can't stop um, rising. I I'm still rising. Is that bad? Can't stop. That's not good. I guess I, we're gonna uh, I'm spend pretty, the whole episode just rising. I'm pretty high up now. Um, I can't really see the ground anymore. <laughs> You're rising fast. Oh my god. That's really fast. Yeah, hey, there's some grapes. You want some grapes? What? In the sky? There's yeah, a, dude, I'll take some sky grapes. There's a big grape tree up here. I picked them. Here, I'm dropping them down to you. Oh. Hey, if anyone knows what grape tree he's talking about, uh, let us know. Anyway, so welcome to Story Dive. Uh, we talk about all things stories and how to get into the industry. And we're on this train, our story dive train, Woo. basically. I can't see the train anymore these either. Conversations. He, Logan, our, the, my co-host, is gone forever, <laughs> question mark. Maybe he's going to come back. Sorry. Somehow, we're, we're, we're still in talkies. radio communications. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm glad we got those walkies earlier. Oh, yeah. The doubloons were costly, but, man, it's worth it, I guess. Yeah, I spent, uh, I Let me know if you get all... cold. I'll try and send a blanket up there or something. Oh, nice. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I'll let you know. I, it's, uh, kind of, it's kind of warm. Yeah. Well, okay. Interesting. I guess heat rises, but I don't know how. Anyway, <laughs> I'm your host, Kai. I, as I just mentioned, this is Logan. Um, we have Hi. a very interesting topic we want to get to today in regards to stories, and that is selling stories or how to become someone who sells them. Uh, but before we do that, we do have something we need to get into, and uh, I believe, Logan, that you owe me a story. Oh, man. You know, I thought about this earlier today. I was like, I need a story of the week for Kai today. And uh, alas, I I have not prepared a story. So what, oh, no. what story can I tell? Um, I feel like it's got to be a good story. It could even be something like breaking news that you find that's like me, really interesting. Okay, uh, this is a this is a I think this is a cool story. Um, uh, okay, maybe it's not. This this is what I would call a very like a very short story. It's like a like a mini story. Okay, excellent. Um, a very a very small talky story. So, um, I. I've been going to work at UVU, which is a college here in Utah. And I, every day when I come into work, I walk through a certain hallway because there's so many different entrances in the building. And I, I walk in and it's this really long hallway with like chairs all down the whole thing. It takes me about, you know, five to eight minutes to walk down this whole thing. Um, it's a pretty long hallway. And every day when I come in, and I go down, uh, there's this guy on the right side who's always, he's got his, he's got his AirPods in and he's just going to town with this yo-yo. Um, and it's like, I've, it's surprisingly enough, I've seen a lot of, uh, people who do the yo-yo stuff and I'm not talking like the plastic yo-yo that you get at the dollar store. I'm talking like, you know, the, the heavy duty yo-yo that like can come off the string and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Um, like big metallic yo-yo and uh, yeah, the like, mega yo-yos. Yeah, it's like you, this is this is a real yo-yo, and like you can do tricks with it. And this guy, he's going crazy. I've seen people work with yo-yos like that, and this guy puts them to shame. He is like spinning it around. He's like making like weird uh, like strings. But okay, I'm not describing it well, but he, it's like he'll fling it up and like put it onto the next string and he's got like eight different layers of strings and he's like swapping them between them all. And then there was like one day I came in because it's like every every time I come in, he's doing this and I, I, I walk by and it just makes me smile. I, I've yet to say anything to him, but it makes me smile. And he's like doing this yo-yo thing. and He's like doing it behind his head. He like puts the yo-yo behind his head and he's like extending his his hands and the, the string it propels the yo-yo up like above his head and back down. and. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing, but it's, I'm always like, this guy is dedicated to the cause, and I respect it. Um, and you know, I I I think it was this past week. I went in, and he wasn't there. So I've been kind of worried about him. Um, oh no! Because we gotta 
We gotta oh. find this yo yo. Yeah, man the and semester. Make him it's mid semester, right? So it's not like the semester changed. Like he should be there. He should be there, and he's not. So, so uh, maybe maybe the moral of the story is to respect what you have while it's while you have it, or like be be in the moment, which is kind of like that's a cliche kind of moral, even though it's a good moral. Or it could be like, you know, maybe maybe he got accepted by the yo yo uh, traveling. The traveling yo-yo men to be a part of the the elite team. He was recruited into the yo-yo verse. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Um, but it just I don't know. It, it was kind of inspiring to see this guy just so locked in to his craft. Um, and it just like gave me the hope to like keep going with what I'm doing. Um. Yeah, and maybe that's awesome. Some, maybe someone else will see it and get inspired. You know, it's like that loop of inspiration. Yeah, Yo-Yo I, Man, if you ever <laughs> see this, you're awesome. We yeah, appreciate you. You're, you're amazing, Keep on bro. Keeping on. You, you've, made, you've made my day uh, more than once, so keep it up. Okay. Dang, yeah. what a story. Thanks that's... for t- Wow, I feel lighter t- than yeah. I've been before. Yeah, I mean, the story was really just that I saw a yo-yo guy for a while, and then he stopped being there. But I, a story is a story, so... Mm, indeed. A story is a story. Stories, it's what you uh, make of and, it, bro. And, uh, dude, I made, I, I made it into something pretty impactful, I would say. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and people have been doing that for, for centuries. I yes. we talked about this before, about, like, some of the oldest... The older, the better, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and our the older, the better episode yeah uh but that's our topic today is how people make money off of stories um because at one point i wasn't sure if that was the case or not um well this is like interesting. whether or not people actually did make money off of stories it is an interesting concept yeah, because I, I i think go ahead oh i i'm just interested where you're going to take this because i feel like this is such an open-ended uh, discussion, like an uh, open-ended topic. Yeah, how to sell a story? There's probably a million different ways you could do it. And honestly, if you do want to learn how to like specifically sell story, I would suggest you know doing some research and figuring out in whatever industry you want, like to to really understand like how you go about making or selling a story in that industry. Of course, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide a platform to do that, but we're not the most knowledgeable source. So anyway, I have a quick Quizlet game for you. Before we get into like the, oh, the yeah. history yes, of dude. selling stories you know and me, stuff I, like that. I love quizzes, dude. Let me add them. Well, this is this is a Quizlet, so oh. let's, let's not discriminate I mean, here. Listen, not anymore, at least. Maybe tiny quizzes are better. All right, I'm I'm all for maybe. it. Maybe we do like shorter, smaller Quizlets. Anyway, so here, <laughs> <laughs> here's the quiz uh, for you. Um, what? Is, so we're going to talk about the highest grossing uh, stuff of all time. Uh, at least in human history thus far. So we're going to do um, book, movie, anime. Okay, <sighs> Okay. Wizard, so, of, Wizard of Oz for all three. Really? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, that cannot be that final answer. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I just call in... Uh, I d- tax you a doubloon for that one. Is, is Does the dictionary count as a story? No. The dictionary is a, it's like a tool. Uh, like if you read every word in order, uh, rep- would it make a story? Uh, I would hesitate to say <laughs> yes. I think no. I, I'm thinking not. Just because okay, okay. to me it's similar in like you type every button on a calculator. Does it suddenly make a story? Not necessarily. It's whatever you attach to those things that might make it a story. But I don't think a dictionary in itself is Okay. Like has I, the yes. intent. Of yeah, it, it was a story. definitely a uh, not a serious question. Um, okay, I'm, oh, re- I'm well, ready. For, I'm ready for. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Those, those, are, those are great answers. Quiz. I'm ready for. Uh, like so wait, 
So are we just going to go through? Should I just give my answers for all three? Um, uh, no, let's do the highest grossing book first. Okay. Um, what do you think the highest grossing? It's... Book. Okay. It's Some not of like these a comic, are not... This is a novel, right? Like it just words. It's kind like, of a, like a book, yeah. So I guess here I have a best-selling individual book, uh, which... The book I'm t in that is in top spot is technically a story, but it's probably like the Bible, right? Interesting. Um, uh, but then there is a best selling series and the best selling, like, this is interesting because uh, I, I don't know too much about books overall, um, but I do know some, right? Like, the thing, the ones that I know should be the, the highest because I know what they are. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not super in the book world, uh -huh. so the ones that have sold a bazillion copies, I should be aware of. So what comes to my mind, you know, you have The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. You have, like, there's some Shakespeare stuff. There's, like, stuff like the uh, Scarlet Pimpernel and stuff. Um, like The Giver and uh, Ender's Game. Like, there's books that people are aware of, but I feel like Harry Potter... So, like, I, I kind of want to say that, like, the Bible might be the most selling standalone. Uh, and then you've got, like, Harry Potter is, like, the best selling series. But Logan, I, I have to tell you, I am deeply impressed. That is two for two. Is that right? No. That is not, exactly bro. right. Okay. All right. I, that, that just made sense in my brain. Because I do know that there's other series that people talk about from, like, I don't, I don't know what his name is, but there, there's a bunch of like series I've heard of that are like really good in like a, the fantasy genre, but like, I don't know. It's like, I, I don't know how you could be Harry Potter as a book series at this point. Um, right. So. Yeah. Well, so yeah, you totally nailed it. Um, Let's go. The Bible Woo! is, yeah, two, two doubloons for Logan. Yeah. If anyone ever wants to keep track of that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> The Bible is the best-selling individual book. It has over 5 billion copies. And I do think there's... Wow. It's kind of <laughs> why I said it's a seemingly special case is that there is an active religion tied to this. Right. Well, where people I think take, there's multiple religions tied to this. It's, it's used in... Well, multiple... Uh, multiple iterations of christianity are they are they counting much. are they counting every because there's different types of bible right like there's like this translation that translation there's are different there? versions of the bible for sure but i'm like, sure they're they're are, taking all of them into okay account. so yeah uh it's it, in a way it's like cheating um but it's also like it also makes well, sense is it it's kind of like just translating it into a different language you know no, you're no, still no, selling I, copies even though it's a different language no it's true i just feel like I don't know. I, I just feel like the Bible is different from what you would, what we would all think of. Like, like again, when we think of selling a story, like the Bible wasn't meant, it wasn't created to be sold and it wasn't created as yeah, like a fictional yeah, thing, you know? And like, I'm not trying to get into the specifics of whether or not it's true or good or bad or whatever. Like it, you guys at home can, you can decide how you feel about the Bible. Um, but it's, I do think that it, it's not your typical book, right? So in a, in a way, I don't want to count it. Um, but I did. It, I that's did have so that interesting. It's, it is. It is technically a record of stories, right? Whether you believe it's real or not, it is still a book of stories. So that's interesting. That, that, it is true. No, it, it's true. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not a book and it's not. It doesn't have stories. It's just like. I don't know. I think I think about its competition and then what other the other stories that it's up against, and it's it's like not. I feel like it's not even in the same competition. You know, like it's. Well, for for one thing, the in second place is the Quran, which is just another religious text for just a different ah, religion. Ah, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. It yeah, makes sense. Nothing in particular that I super recognize is there until about seventh place, which is Lord of the Rings with 153 million copies. Wait, is, is that... Or the... Which one, though? Because is, is that just a single book? Uh, 
Yeah. Well, so Lord of the Rings itself is just one book. Oh, really? It was split into... Well, I guess it is three volumes. Never mind. It is three books. So the one I'm looking... I think this counts as, like, the entire... Okay. Lord of the Rings thing. Anyway. But it's so over that's Harry in Potter? seventh place, though. It's uh, over- yes. As an individual book, yes. But the best-selling series, book series, is Harry Potter. Right. I mean, how many Harry Potter books are there? There's like eight or nine or something, right? I think there's seven. And then there's like an eighth, a cursed eighth one that people don't like, question mark? Right. I'm not I mean, sure. I, I guess that helps, though, when it comes to novels. So it's like you have eight different novels compared to like... Other, yeah, other, for other... every one person that owns the whole thing, that yes. counts for eight towards yeah. the, the series. Exactly. That, that's what I was talking about, which, you know, that's not always the case, but... um, Anyways, anyways, okay. So, next, we've got manga? Okay, so uh, I was going to say the, the next uh, runner-up series is Goosebumps to Harry Potter, so that's interesting. Oh, that is interesting. I didn't know that many people read Goosebumps. I mean, I've definitely read my... uh book or two of Goosebumps when I was in elementary school. Um, but... Okay, okay. Yeah, what was so the next? next one is uh, the next one is the highest grossing anime. So when anime. I say grossing, it it really means the the one that has made the most money, if that makes sense. In, oh, in profit, man. where the cost to make it Oh, has been outshined by its. I mean, by its, its okay. Gross. This is such an. I don't. Does this include? Does this include uh, movies? For the anime? No, no. This is just anime. I I didn't because movies. I feel like is its own anime. Movies are kind of its own niche. Well, it's starting to become its own niche for topic. In, for instance, like the best and the most grossing anime movie of all time is like Dragon Ball Z Broly. That is like the most, in terms of anime movies, that is the highest selling. I mean, I, I don't know if it's that's the case anymore because I don't think Superhero, which is the newest Dragon Ball Z movie, I don't think it outsold it. Um, and I don't think there are any One Piece movies that have outsold it. And I think Mugen Train for Demon Slayer uh, is up there. But Dragon Ball Z is just different, bro. So I'm like, if they, because the thing about the Broly movie is that it's canon to Dragon Ball Z for the anime, which is why I'm like, I don't know if it's counting that, but. Uh, for the sake of the argument, let's not count okay. movie I just, cases. I'm not the Naruto be... movies, all of them have, there's so many Naruto movies that you could. I think there's over no maybe there's not 20 but there's like around 20 One Piece movies as well um, so I know what you mean it's and they all vary like th- these days anime movies are like actual movies whereas back in the day they were kind of just like extended TV specials or a weird experimental what if scenario so because uh, I feel like for anime it has to be between Dragon Ball Z and One Piece I feel like those are the two that have sold the most. I think Demon Slayer is up there because it's so popular, but it just hasn't been around long enough. If we're talking grossing of all time, Dragon Ball Z and One Piece have been around for over 20 years, and they're both still going. Um, One Piece, I think, has surpassed Dragon Ball Z in popularity. It, it, it surpassed Dragon Ball Z in popularity in Japan a long time ago. It's been the, the most popular manga and anime in japan since like the 2010s uh and it's still that way i believe but demon slayer did come in out of the blue and take the number one spot for like a year or two um but, uh, dude i don't know no, 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 no. don't hurt yourself <laughs> i'm going i'm gonna just go with one piece okay even though it might be more popular in japan so i'm like if it made more money in the west and in mexico because dragon ball z is really popular in mexico Ah, okay, dude. I'm okay. just gonna I'm gonna bite the bullet, dude. It it's it's One Piece, but Dragon Ball Z's got to be up there too. You are indeed correct. Yeah, wait, One really? Piece is the highest. Yeah, it's the highest oh. grossing anime of all time. Oh, dude, I was sweating. Wait, where, where's where's Dragon Ball Z? Is it right behind it? I don't know, actually. Uh, okay. I would I would have to look that up. Let's see. Dude, I like was doing like 
freaking algebra in my brain. Was... Your mental <laughs> gymnastics being super hard. Oh my gosh. I, I do think those um, are the, those are the top three, like most popular. So it's interesting anime. because the the most popular anime and the most highest grossing anime is two different answers. Those I, are I two know. Different things. Well, it's because popularity changes over time, but grossing it's you kind of have an advantage with grossing if you've been around long enough. Um, right. Yeah, that's true. So, well, because like here, I keep getting the most popular anime is. Attack on Titan, Death oh, Note. Oh, how did Metal I forget Optimus. about Attack on Titan? Well, and honestly, honestly, bro. But but Attack on Titan is not necessarily the most highest grossing. No, it's not because, well, and that's what's interesting to me is Attack on Titan was everywhere when season one came out. Like it it blew up. But I feel like as time has gone on, less and less people care about Attack on Titan. Whereas you, with other animes, so Dragon Ball Z, Naruto. Uh, One Piece, like those ones, the longer they're around, the more people care about it. So I just think it's interesting how Attack on Titan kind of like had a boom and then it fell off. Um, And I feel like Demon Slayer in a way, kind of similar, but Demon Slayer has been able to kind of like maintain its audience, I think a little bit better than Attack on Titan. Um, but this, this is a whole anime uh, discussion that we don't have to get into right now. Um, right, right. This is a Quizlet. Yes, a, a, Quizlet. A, yeah, a very small quiz that I we I'm stretching this out way too far. Um, oh, you're good. But okay, so okay, I, so I got last three doubloons, bro. You have three. You're three yes. for three right now, Dude, which is, is the highest score I've ever seen you achieve in <laughs> any of these episodes. <laughs> this is great. I feel so good. I I think Logan might be peaking in this. Oh episode. my gosh, bro. <laughs> um, okay. <sighs> So, lastly, though, is the highest grossing movie. Oh, dude, and I'll give I you an extra this. doubloon if you can get the second best one. I know this, don't I? Oh, no. I looked, dude, and I kid you not. I, I was bored at work with one of my coworkers, uh, like, I don't know, two months ago or something. And we actually looked this up. But I can't remember which one was on top. I'll, I'll start. I'll list the few, and then I'll and then I'll do my arguments in my brain again. So it's like I think you have Wizard of Oz, and like Snow White, and Avatar, and like End Games in like the top ten, I think, or something. But I don't think it's number one. I don't. End Games not number one. There's Avatar, and there's Avatar Two, which I think Avatar Two sold a little worse, but they're both up there. There's a, you know, again, there's Titanic. If I didn't mention Titanic yet. Which one is the most? Which one's the most? It's got to be one of the ones I mentioned, just barely. Um, I think it's between Titanic and Wizard of Oz. I think, am I forgetting one? It can't be Avatar, right? It's not, that's not the number one. <sighs> no, which one is it? Um, I think you need to get some uh, fuller air. You might be hyperventilating up yeah, there. Yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> so I'm getting lightheaded up here. Uh, let's see. We need likes and comments to, to give yes. Logan some air. For every like, I go I go a little higher every time. So just keep liking me up, dude. I need to... I, I, need won't, to... I won't give him air, but he'll get popular. I, yeah. Wait. But, okay, wait. Let's Let's do... Let's lock in... Titanic. I'm locking it in. Logan, I regret to inform you your no! streak has been broken. No! No, you see it? Titanic oh. is in fifth place for the highest grossing no, movie. Oh, dude. Dude, if you say Avatar, I'm going to cry. Dude. It is Avatar. No! It's the number one. No, dude. I'm sad. So, Avatar is the, the, the blue people one is in first place. And then Endgame is it, Avengers Endgame is second, and then I think it's The Way of Water is third. Wow, um, uh, dude, uh, dang. Okay, so I, I, I kind of I had I had the right players in place. I just picked the wrong one. Right players. So I'll give you a a, a pity doubloon. <sighs> okay. Well, no, I don't want this. I, I, I don't. I refuse your pity. To, the so it's it's made of chocolate. It's like one of those chocolate fake doubloons. You okay, know? fine. I'll I'll eat I'll eat it later. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll give you one of those. Um, <laughs> so, I, just one last thing for this Quizlet. I, you don't even have to get this right. I just kind of want to tell you about it. It's not even a question. So, while I was looking for the, the highest grossing movie, I also ended up finding the lowest grossing movie. Um, of all time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I even think there's new ones that are worse than Morbius, like uh, Madam Web and stuff. Well, right, right. But I feel like if you know what it is, then it's probably not the worst selling movie. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, um, okay, so this one is called It's the Lowest. Okay, uh, this is just for fun. There's no doubloons involved. But how much money do you think the lowest grossing film made? 20 bucks. Uh, you're actually pretty in the <laughs> No, no is. way. <laughs> so it's... Okay, as I'm... I'll just kind of read some of this here. It, the movie is called Z Zizix Road. What? <laughs> Zizix Road? Um, is that like a Mario Kart Zizix track Road. that was unused? Maybe. <laughs> Question mark. So, okay, here it is. Uh, it's named for the rural Mojave Desert Road on which it takes place. Um, I'm trying to find what it was about. Is it just like a guy driving on a desert road for like an hour? Is that like the whole movie? Like some guys mm. in the back seat. Like eating Cheetos, you can hear his crunches every five minutes. He pops open a new bag. I'm, I'm looking at his crunches. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure what this is about. It's <laughs> it's, it's so bad that I can't even necessarily find, find what it. About. Oh my god! But apparently, it had a lot of big name people. What? Uh, Catherine Hagel, who is like the she played in Grey's Anatomy, okay. Um, and then there's Tom Sizemore, who was like he was in Saving Private Ryan for Harbor, okay. So, so yeah, these are some, actors some, that have done some good stuff, yeah, some big name stuff, but somehow they were it like from what I'm reading here. It seems like there's some sort of strange problem. They were never... Oh, okay. While they never intended to release the film domestically, they had an obligation to the Screen Actors Guild, which required a U.S. theatrical release for films with a budget under $2.5 million that were not in the director-to-video market. What? So as the budget of Zizix Road fell under that mark, at about $2 million. Uh, $2 they, million? Yeah. They weren't able to get into a theater. So the most... Okay, here we go. The most cost-effective solution turned out to be renting a single theater in Dallas, Texas for $1,000 and showing the film once a day at noon for a week. A total of six people purchased tickets for $5, yielding the $30 gross. What? <laughs> what do you mean? That's Two crazy. of the six tickets went to one of the movie's makeup artists and a friend. Wait, 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 wait. So one I, of their directors personally refunded their tickets. I don't understand. Uh, renting one theater costed a thousand dollars. So why didn't they just bite the bullet and not rent a theater? You That's a I good mean? question. I have no idea. Well, I think they were required to I mean, by the uh, Screen Actors Guild. The real question is, where did the two million dollars go? Like. <laughs> down the drain dude it, like, they flushed it how, how can you spend two million dollars that's a, that's that a two does. million dollar flush stash it, it's crazy it's crazy so the one of the reasons i am so interested in this and why i wanted to do it as a topic today is like it's very possible to lose a lot of money yes selling stories right um okay so yeah i i'm interested too man i like what wh how Where's the starting point for this journey that you've prepared for me? I'll, I know that we, we did this Quizlet, but what do you, what do you want to talk about first? Because I feel like the ways to sell stories has changed over time compared to how it used to be. Agreed. So, well, so 
where this kind of comes from, I tried to look it up where, or like what point in human history we kind of, there became this phenomenon that people would pay money to be like at, at its core entertained. Mm, okay. Paying for at entertainment. What, at what point? Yeah. Paying for and basically paying for something at its core stories aren't a necessary, you're not going to die if you, no, don't they're not. I, they are a luxury, I think, in a lot of ways. They can be a very educational, inspirational. It can be a very positive thing. I think overall stories are a very positive and sometimes necessary thing. But I do think that the whole market, like the whole business of selling stories, it has very much been the entertainment business, I think, at its core. So, Right. Um, but at some point, it kind of went from telling because at its core really a lot of stories are just can be told for free and are told for free so at what point did people start actually making money to tell stories mm. um one of the earliest i i tried researching that and there's not a specifically clear first storyteller profession right uh, i mean i'm thinking about like shakespeare or um like those early plays where it's like you're putting on a production. So it's not just, it's like a story that's told through extravagant means and a lot of preparation and setup. Um, I feel like that's something that makes sense to pay for. But in terms of like paying someone money to like tell a story by the campfire, like, I don't know. I don't know if that was ever a thing. So interestingly enough, um, you bring up that whole campfire thing, something to tell someone at a campfire. That was a profession. Really? Because that's what a bard and a minstrel did. Oh, okay. So bar I looked bards, up what a bard and... I don't know what a minstrel is, but bards play music, right? Yeah, well, so a bard... It's interesting, because uh, on this topic, a bard um, originally was a poet. That's, like, what they primarily did. They did poetry. Okay. Over time, the pop culture sphere, at least... It's interesting because we talk about the pop culture sphere now, and when I mention that, people immediately go to things like Taylor Swift and, and pop culture, you know? Well, I mean, that Where, is pop culture today. But that's the whole point of pop yeah, culture is it's, it's pop whatever's culture, current. 2,000 plus years. Right. Right. 2,000 yeah. plus years ago, bards went from poets to pop culture kind of romanticize them as musicians. And that's where kind of music started to come into their profession. I'm pretty sure a minstrel is a similar thing, kind of a musician, something like a court jester, just like a an entertainer that is on retainer. And uh, they did make money for their services, but it was usually because a king or a queen or some kingdom was willing to pay specifically for their services almost on a subscription basis. Interesting. You, know? you can live here and you can, we'll pay for everything as long as you come court our dinners and, and make it funny and interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, that totally counts. I feel like, you know, um, yeah. Cause that That's, is, that is someone who is making selling a stories. living. Yeah. They're making a living with their ability to, to make, to create and tell stories. So, that yeah, that's cool. And I, I did want to say uh that I think it's interesting how poetry I think over time turned into music. Cause if you look at music, um, you know, because there's the music side of it, but I feel like poetry, modern poetry is music. And I just thought that was an interesting thought. So um Yeah. You know. Inter uh re um uh, totally a side topic, but the rap, like the the genre of rap. Yeah. Rap itself is it stands for rejects attempting poetry. Really, that's what like really? what it's good for. So, wow, and now now it's it's, it's another direct reference. It's the freaking like, it's so popular, bro. Like, I mean, I I love rap, so it's you got to get me with those 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 uh what do you call them bars, dude? I sound so crazy yeah. right now. You gotta, hit, you gotta hit me with those bars that like get, make me think, you know, like the deep stuff. Yeah, smack him upside the head with the bar. <laughs> hey, I look, wonder if you tried to get. They ain't reaching me up here, bro. 
Uh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, so, well, in that vein, that's the oldest that I can, like, think of on the top of my head. There might definitely probably is some other profession before that that okay. I'm not accounting for. Like, like but, court jesters. But essentially... And bards. Yeah, court jesters, bards, minstrels, that's the, the earliest that I could really find. Yes. I, I, I agree. I agree. You know, what about that one caveman who told stories and got uh, pretty rock? You know, what about him? Perhaps. I mean, that technically <laughs> would be selling a, a story. But what's interesting about it is it's a, an interesting phenomenon that someone would trade something, a, a currency that in most cases would be keeping them alive. And they would trade that at sometimes the expense of staying healthy or alive to then get some sort of entertainment value. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We feel that every day where I have to be like, okay, do I want to buy my favorite snacks or my favorite food? Or can I sacrifice some of that food to pay for a video game? Right. Not that I do that right. anymore, but that is a mentality I used to do. I mean, that's definitely a mentality. A lot of people do. It's like, I can either keep eating ramen or I can go out to my favorite restaurant, you know, and it all just depends on like, what, what can my bank account, like, what can we afford in this economy? And, you know, I really want the new switch, but it's going to set me back, you know, like whatever, whatever it yeah. is. Um, I think that's a very relatable stance. Um, so, yeah. And I, I did want to bring up, a. I had this thought that artists, could artists have been selling stories um, through their art? And maybe that proceeds. I don't know. When I do think so. I don't know when artists started to do their stuff, but I think that they, like, we've kind of established that art is kind of a way of storytelling. And I'm, I'm like, the, any any artist who made money off of their art should also be considered a storyteller who sold their stories. I think. Yeah, I think so too. I guess in that vein, technically, they would win, but it's like. Do we want to give them that win on a technicality? I kind of do, because that's what what is art at the end of the day? If you want someone to come paint a mural in your house, it's like they're giving you like their story, like like they're painting you a story on the wall. Especially because I feel like a lot of old art was of people. They would like they paint a, they'd paint a scene. Um, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what people got back in the day, but. Yeah, well, no, you're right. Um, my wife listens to a lot of art history stuff. Um, hey, there we go. And it's it's super intriguing because a lot of it is exactly what you're saying, is that that concept of telling a story through your brushstrokes and, and through the decisions, the way you drew this line tells its own story. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are so many different people that can glean. I guess that is one of the reasons that um, the Mona Lisa is such a, uh, universally popular painting it's because no matter who you are when you look at it there's like some kind of story that you invent for the image yeah and you know uh, I just wanted to bring that up I, I don't I, I, I'm, I, I'm still kind of down to give it to the, the court gestures and stuff but like because that seems like when it was like an actual it became an official job that people could aspire to be um Maybe instead of it being I mean, they had sculptors and and painters and stuff on retainer as well. Like, the, I guess that's true. I guess it's true. So maybe like when when, maybe king, when kingdoms were established, that's kind of when the business started, because the king was just hiring people to give him these stories, you know. Right. So we'll we'll give it an honest tie all around. We, yeah, let's round give it the of applause king. for everyone involved. The king, well, the, the king, king didn't he, make a story. He just no, paid but, for it. But he made it happen. He's the reason why these storytellers got paid. And why they were able to okay. have the profession. Well, uh, you know? long live the king. <laughs> long live. Long live the king. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, that's kind of the earliest history of that. So this has been this practice uh, of selling, quote unquote, a story has been around for a very, very long time. Um, and as you said, kind of the mediums and how we go about doing it has changed very drastically. Yeah. But I do think there are some universal truths about it that are important to account for. 
And one of that is quality of stories. That's really kind of what you pay for in the end. Is you pay for a higher quality than what someone just yeah. on the street could give you. Right. Um, which it is It is different what the price is for each one. Because do we want to just go through right now like what a typical person would spend on a story these days? Is Yeah, I, that's interesting. It's because yeah, there, there's different ways right so the first thing that comes to my brain is books uh books can go anywhere from five to like twenty dollars and if you get like a, a book set it could go upwards of a hundred or more um like if we're talking like mangas right like if i were to buy like all of full metal alchemist this is manga i mean it would be specifically in, in u.s dollars yes yeah yeah we're speaking in u.s dollars um uh, so like do do the math accordingly if you want to see how much it would be wherever you live but uh like a whole if i wanted to get the entire manga set for full Metal alchemist like that would probably be a hundred dollars or so um but then you have like movies that's it it's about like 30 books long well so well, how mangas do it is they they take like five or more chapters and they make it a volume um i know that but isn't, and doesn't so full it, metal have like 30 volumes so i would say uh, i don't know a volume probably goes for like 10 or 15 dollars and then you just times that by how many volumes are and i actually have oh, okay yeah so it, it would be probably a couple hundred because i have uh the last volume of full metal alchemist and it's volumes 25 through 27 so that means there's 27 volumes in the whole thing. So you'd be buying 27 volumes, which might end up being around $270. I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm just staying off the top of my head. It's going to be a couple hundred uh, for an entire story like that. Because, you know, one piece would be like, like, that's way longer. So we're not going to do the math for that. That's but a small fortune. That, that, that's like buying all of Full House on, on Blu-ray. You know what I mean? Like, or The Simpsons. Like, it's going to be a lot. Um, but yeah. then, then you have, uh, you have movies at the movie theater. Which that's like seven to fifteen dollars, right? Like you can you can go see oh, a movie. Oh, that's just for the ticket. Well, that's what I mean is you can go see a movie for seven bucks. That's like the cheapest the cheapest way to experience a movie. Um, at least in the theater, right? Like that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the experience to go to the theater because these days this is where it gets really interesting to me because you have movies, you have books. Um, there's like plays. Like you can go to school plays for free to ten bucks depending on what they're charging. Sometimes they're like really cheap. Um, like there's musical performances, which, you know, again, depending on who it is and stuff, it can vary. Uh, but w then we run into, we have streaming services. So we have like Hulu, Netflix, Disney plus, those all go for a monthly subscription. That's around five to $10. Um, and then that's a lot of content right there, which is no wonder it's, it's blown up, right? No wonder everybody has at least one of these subscriptions. Cause that's how many stories for yeah. you know, may, maybe a hundred dollars a year or less. No, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that a streaming service is a story. I think it's more just kind of a platform stories, kind of like a library, but for shows and movies. I mean, you know? it's, it's true. It's true. But like, how much do you have to pay to experience those stories? Um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Um, but it is true that like, maybe we need to make because doesn't the government kind of pay for libraries? Can we have the government pay for streaming services, or is that just like a step <laughs> uh, too far? Well, so yeah, that's what's interesting because it might be because then you go to YouTube, which is free, and YouTube has oh like yeah infinite I didn't even think about content. That. So I just I I'm interested in what your plan was for uh like like what's what side of this did we want to dive into because. There's like, how much money can you make on a story? What's the best way to advertise it? Like, there's that side, and then there's like, kind of like the way stories are going. Because YouTube, I think, is where stories are going. YouTube and uh, streaming services. Um, so let's uh let's go that route. Uh, I do I so I had a plan to talk about like what makes a story at least quality enough to be considered sellable does that make sense oh okay because you like that movie you mentioned did, did not meet that mark that we're selling movie it did not meet that mark yeah 
So it's like it has to be good enough to where people want to spend money on it. Um, right. And and how do you do that? This is my question, I guess, uh, that I want oh, to present. Dude. I would maybe we could do an in between about um like the where stories are going and and that could, what you had well, sure and like maybe maybe we can uh do a little small blurb on it just cuz uh I feel like there is a little bit to say there but I I am very curious about this this question you've posed the the whole quality thing cuz I guess I've never really thought about that I'm like yeah you just know it's good like you you watch a trailer or you a friend who you trust says it's good and you're like okay that looks like it's worth my time but but why is it worth my time or and or why was it worth my friend's time um cuz i mean it has to meet a certain standard but it doesn't need to be like the best thing in the world like i'll go watch something in the theater it doesn't have to be the best movie ever made it just has to be good enough you know right well so the on that topic interesting enough like a lot of people have stopped not necessarily going to theater entirely but they've gone for less and less thing i keep up with kind of the theater news outlet for a while mostly yeah. because as some youtubers i watch are very high into that scene mm -hmm. um and the market for at least in America, for theaters, has gone down drastically, incredibly small. Right. And it's because the, the stories that are being put out just don't... A lot of people will either they watch them and then they tell their friends, or they just don't even give it the time of day anyway. Right. But the, basically, the consensus around that is it's just a waste of time. In fact, uh, towards the end of 2023, theaters were hitting a really low point in in sales and it was well, some theaters actually did have to kind of shut down for it and it's and it's an interesting thought and a lot of yeah. people were saying oh just theaters are dying everyone's just going to watch it on streaming and stuff and then godzilla minus one came out and totally blew that theory out of the water well not and only well, record yeah, high sales it's because when you were when you first started talking about theaters doing bad my initial reaction was well, why go to theaters when we have all of this content at home now? Like, which I do think that plays a major role. But then I had the other thought of, well, last year, wait, I don't know if this is all last year, but like recently we've had the Barbie movie. We've had Oppenheimer. We've had Godzilla Minus One, right? We've had these movies that people are going to the theater to see. Um, like, right. I'm, I'm sure if you look at the numbers, like those movies did very well. Like almost everybody saw those movies um, that I know of. Like you, 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 out of the three we mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that whoever's watching has seen at least one of them. Um, and if you haven't seen at least one of them, you've at least heard of them because that's what happens with movies. So I don't think like I, the theaters obviously aren't dead because I do think that there is this problem where the movies just aren't delivering, like you're saying that they're just not meeting that standard. Uh, but at the same time, there is that there is that divide now where it's not the only way to experience a movie. It used to be the only way. Like, you'd have to go to the theater to experience it. And now it's like, oh, not only does everybody own a, like, smartphone, but every smartphone can have any of these streaming services. It can be on your TV. It can be in, like, ev there's so many streaming services with so many movies. And then there's YouTube on top of it that has... Yeah, you know, and there's Amazon, there's Amazon Prime Video, and like a lot of people have Amazon Prime. Like, it's like you're bound to have one streaming service, and then you know, YouTube is just this whole other beast of content. Where do do I watch very many movies these days? Not really. Do I watch TV very much these days? Not really. But I watch a lot of YouTube, like daily. Um, and I feel like that does feed into it. So I, th I think it's a, I think it's a mixture of the two. Um, okay. But so something that's interesting, even with the YouTube kind of thing, you're right. It is a giant beast of a of an entertainment platform. But I would honestly, I wonder what the ratio of uh, viewing is. Like, how many people are watching the highest echelon content, and how much content is out there that has been posted. 
that only gets so many views that only gets yeah. uh, like 200 or under views i wonder what the ratio of that is so like the ratio of videos that have over a thousand views and then the ra two ratio of videos that have under what is that what does that comparison look like or even just anything 10,000 and under compared to anything 10,000 and over what does that ratio look like and i'm sure that there is this enormous enormous uh kind of untapped well not necessarily untapped but like unviewed section of youtube and it this goes back to the question of why is that stuff unviewed and why are some other stuff viewed way more uh and i do think youtube serves itself differently for a number of reasons um as in like it's it's a giant platform for teaching and for education as well as entertainment right. but it's if everything. we're just looking at it's crazy yeah so. but if we're just looking at entertainment only there still is a huge piece of untapped like land i guess of, yeah. of youtube entertainment wise yeah because there are like story youtubers that like specifically will tell stories and like animate them um which like and then there's like people who make like like there was like the youtube red shows for a while and i feel like there, there's a lot of ways to consume stories on youtube but you know and there's like vlog channels so however that fits in you know like those are all different ways of storytelling um but i do think that like the whole movie experience is a very unique one and it is i think still like the high it, it it is the the best of its kind you know what i mean like if you want to experience a live action or even a, a 3d animation movie like that's the way to do it and i know that video games are feeding into that too video games are kind of pulling from that too like uh like the last of us uncharted uh spider-man uh like there's a lot of video games that are coming out these days that can compete with like cinematic movies like they kind of they give their own take on that so it's it's interesting how things have evolved like there are so many options these days compared to i think back in the day like because I, I was talking about how youtube there's youtube at home there's so much content at home and honestly like if i think about like the 90s and stuff it's like everybody had a tv and the tv had infinite content as well in a way like it, it wasn't like as open-ended but like there was always content on um so it's like it, in, a, in a way that argument kind of falls flat because movies were around then and they did well so why were they doing well then but not now um or even like before tv the biggest thing to keep people in their homes listening to stuff was the radio there are several different kinds of stories and i mean you would even like most people instead of going and watching the game the football game or the baseball game on tv they would turn it on the radio and and just listen right okay and so, imagine in that way yes I, I that is absolutely right so i i, I do want to dial back here and be like so when's the last time you went to the movie theater to see something uh it had to have been godzilla minus one so december and why why that movie oh wait i totally lied i did go and watch final fantasy 7 adventure oh, with, th with that Sally. is true but it's like why i mean that one kind of counts because i'm i kind of want to hone in on the the godzilla because you're you hadn't experienced that story before like you, you'd already seen advent children so you knew it was good um that's like, true that how did true. you how did you know that minus one was worth your time i guess it's mine okay so that's versus, an interesting concept other, and i kind of versus other movies so that's an interesting question uh to to put in perspective how much i loved godzilla minus one um i have this giant poster of godzilla that's like drawn kind of the honokai japanese wave yeah. art style <laughs> yeah i think and it's right it. next to my computer like I I really want it to be a centerpiece when we actually start doing our like our faces. Mm -hmm. I want it to be like the biggest thing people see because it was so cool. So 
the interesting thing for me is the way that I was able to start telling, understanding that it was good, was for one, I trusted the brand already of Godzilla. Well, sort of. Is there's legendary the company is making its own Godzilla movies, but they're doing like this weird Avengers franchise level Godzilla stuff when that's not really what it was originally meant to be. I guess when I learned that it was that Godzilla minus one was supposed to be kind of a return to what the original story was, that was really intriguing to me because the original Godzilla was such a deep thing it, it was kind of a way for japan almost to like heal from the end of world war ii right at least to my understanding so there's actual yeah. historical significance behind it yeah that sounds right to me actually i think i've heard similar things which is really cool uh right well so there's there was that there was that aspect that it felt like there was sincere and real impact behind the story but the other thing was the people that i had heard from that did go and try it went mostly because they enjoyed the brand or it looked engaging enough in their trailers to entice them to watch. And then they came and told me to go watch it. And what's so interesting about that is these people told me not to go watch uh, other movies like the Marvels or Indiana Jones five or, uh, a lot of the other stuff that came out last year. Uh-huh. Um, I was told not to watch it because it was a snooze fest or it was it was boring or a slew of different reasons why not to watch them. Wait. But then... Oh, okay, but they told you to watch Godzilla. But then, yeah, once it came to Godzilla Minus One, all of a sudden, for the first time in months, I was like, you have to go see this. You have to go see this movie. You're missing out if you don't go see this. And so then from that, it sparked me to want to do some research on the movie. I watched a trailer and I learned what kind of what I did, how it was like a return to the historical thing. And then I decided, what the heck? Let's I want to go watch it. That sounds awesome. Personally, I am already a fan of Godzilla because I like big, big screaming monsters. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Maybe it's a dude thing, but just like the yeah. I don't know. Big no, no, scary no, no, screaming no, no. monsters is dude, really cool to me. What's not to like? It's a it's ungabunga like big giant monster like destroying the town. I mean on a base level. I know I know it goes deeper than that, but like it, that that's already appealing for a lot of people. It's the same reason why people like giant robots, the same reason why people like swords and explosions and stuff, you know? It's just like Sure. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a yeah, yeah. Um, right. Well, but does that answer your question? That like, yeah. So it, I, this is what I'm kind of learning is I think trust is a very big part of this, and I, I'll expand on that because, um, yeah, I, expand on that. But I can see our stop coming up soon. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Expand so expand on that. We'll... I I just know that for my personal life most most things i get into most things i get into are recommended to me by somebody so mm. it's very interesting how that works like and it is interesting because i i've i've kind of gone into in the, in the video game episode i think it was called game over go check it out um i think i did talk about hollow knight and that is a game that i did not hear from someone else which is interesting that it's one of my favorite games and I didn't hear about it from someone, but I feel like like for anime, for movies, for books, uh, all the ones that I read or all of the movies that I've seen, they were all recommended to me. Like I hear good things from other people. Uh, I hear friends that are like, this was really good. You should go see it. Um, or I've seen it in the past because someone recommended it to me and the sequel, I have that trust. Like you said, I'm just like, Oh, like for instance, Spider Verse Two, the was it was it called Across the Spider Verse? Um, I saw that yeah. movie and I had I, like I you didn't have to do anything to convince me to see that movie because I enjoyed the first one so much, um, and the second one held up to that standard in my opinion. So it's, uh, I you know what I mean? Like it advertised itself once I saw the first one, but I saw the first one because everyone was saying good things about it, you know. Uh, 
that. So uh-huh. it, it's interesting how, at least for me, that's why that's what it takes for me to see a movie is to have people recommend it to me. But there is another thing to be said about some, there has to be somebody out there that takes a chance on it. Cause I've done that before as well. I've done that with video games, like back in the day, uh, you know, back with, with like mini clip or armor games or whatever, like those online flash game websites. I loved just going on the website and clicking a random game. Let's play something random. Let's, let's find this out. And, uh, I feel like that's the most I've done when it comes to random testing. I, I've tried a bunch of games. Like, uh, I would, you know, I, I, I played all sorts of random games growing up. I would just be like, what's this? You know, we go to Blockbuster back when that was a thing. And I'd like see a game on the shelf and be like, this looks cool. Let's try it out. Um, but it is interesting because somebody has to do that. Somebody has to be the first one. And then they tell somebody about it and then it spreads. I feel like that that's, I think the best way to have something go viral. Um, because honestly, I mean, you, YouTube algorithm helps for YouTube and movie trailers, I think help. But I think at the end of the day, it's like you pretty much only have to convince the one person uh, to see it. And if it's good, he will tell everybody he knows about it. And then they will tell everybody they know about it. Cause it's that good. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, seriously. And hey, to kind of round this out, because I really appreciate what you said um, with it, all it takes is that one person. Um, to the listeners who frequently listen, like we, we see it. We, we're very aware that a lot of our, especially our episodes lately, are getting around 100 views and stuff like that. Thanks. Thanks so much. You, to us, you're that one person. Yes. All it takes is just that one person to to kind of spread the word on what we're doing. And we appreciate that so much. And yeah. honestly, like going through this journey of us, me and Logan learning how stories work and all about them, you guys being on the journey and like starting to comment on stuff, greatly appreciated. Yeah, Seriously. Thanks. Some of the coolest stuff. Yeah, thanks so much for for being here. Um we, you know, we're we're kind of we're in this for the, for the stories and we're, we're learning as we go. Um, but if you, if, if you like what we're offering, like, please like tell somebody about it, you know, cause again, the, the way stories sell and the way things get spread is through, I think the, I honestly think that word of mouth is how it happens. Like I, I remember the day cause m- most, most of the stuff I've experienced again is from friends and, so I remember there was one day I got home and my brother was like, bro, you've got to play this game. And he was talking about Undertale, you know, you know, and I, yeah. I, I go on stream and uh, like Markiplier is playing Stardew Valley. And I'm like, that game looks sick. And I, so I don't, you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, the reason I'm into One Piece is because when I was 10 years old, my older brother was recommended by someone else that one piece was really good and i started watching it with him because he was watching you know it's like there's so many things in my life where how did i get into it it's because someone else told someone else that it was good and you trust people you know it's like this guy has a good track record everything that he has told me to watch or play is really good and so i'm gonna give it a shot you know like how much does it take to convince somebody so uh if you like our podcast yeah go tell somebody be like hey this is actually a pretty cool podcast nobody knows about it yeah you know? and yeah. Be, be honest greatly appreciate that yeah you know like anyways uh do, do you think that that's it though kai do you think that that's the 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 one and only way because advertising i think does help but when it comes to the stories like it's such a subjective thing right like it's a yeah it's a personal taste well, thing so, so it's it's harder to to advertise than like oh like get my toilet paper like because right you, need I, it, you know so i'll say this um i think that advertising is a, a very big reason that stories do well or stories sell but i also think that a good story speaks for itself and unfortunately, I do feel like we're going to have to leave it at that because there's just there's so much to cover yeah. in selling stories that to do it in one sitting would be preposterous. And frankly, you might as well be at 
Venus or Jupiter by now because you've been floating a long time and I can't believe we're still in radio contact. <laughs> yeah, I, I think gotta... I can. Uh, I'm starting to see uh, the rings of Saturn. Okay, dang. Well, so uh, <laughs> viewers, thank you so much for watching. I gotta spend some time trying to get Logan back on Earth, on, on the ground again. But in the meantime, yeah. watch some of our other stuff. Give us a like, seriously. Give a uh, give a sweet sub, all that a good stuff. Sub, and we'll like, see you. Subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. All that stuff. You know. All that stuff. <laughs> all that stuff. And we'll uh, we'll see you in the next one. Um, all right, Logan, I gotta get you down. So, uh, um, do, do you think if I keep going up, that uh, eventually I'll come back around? Like, do you think I'll like come back? Maybe, before? but is that something you're? Oh, I don't know. Uh, we'll have to test it. But hey, in the meantime, uh, I think yeah. I, I think Bye. I can see the train. I can, I can see it above me. Wait, what?